Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. It is Sunday nights, 8 p.m. EST. You're bored as fuck. What better show to do than a conspiracy theory episode right now as we speak? People are burning down 5G towers convinced that there is a conspiracy theory that 5g has caused the coronavirus what's the link between those two things not sure but what they do know is this uh they, it has been debunked as of today because africa has thousands of covid19 cases and they have no 5g yet so i don't know what i feel worse for to be honest with you that that africa doesn't have 5g or that uh, or that the, the coronavirus is actually there now um again what's the connection dan this is what a conspiracy theory is no dude. conspiracy theories as john brinkus our special guest today will let us know are rooted in actual factual events throughout history are they though and then there's something called <laughs> if, it, if it's if it's if it's like uh old scripture it's called exegesis otherwise it's called something else but it's like you take more out of what you're seeing than what's actually there. Sure. And start to, we're, we're pattern building creatures. Sure. But there's nothing about what a 5G tower does that would result in viral shedding from the back of your throat. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because a lot of people would say these conspiracy theories are all made up anyways. Like you said, we've got Mr. Uh, John Brinkus back on the show. You were on last week and you told us off air, you were like, dude. I'll go down a rabbit hole with you guys, conspiracy theory wise, of what's real, what's not, and what your beliefs are. And and we said, hey man, come back ASAP and let's do this and burn it down. Absolutely. Yeah. So li- <laughs> little known fact. So most people know me from sports science, but I own a production company that produced thousands of hours of TV. A lot of them were in the paranormal conspiracy space. And when I tell you I am, I can go deep on conspiracy theories. Uh-huh. I have researched them up one side, down another, and can speak fairly intelligently, just to give people something to think about. Okay, so let's start. <laughs> let's start here. Okay, <clears throat> name the shows for the audience that you have produced, and and that way it'll give us a little bit of background of what you've actually gone into, because I'm sure a lot of the people at home have seen these. Yeah, there is a show called Fact or Faked Paranormal Files. Oh, on shit. Sci-fi. Yeah, you did that one? Yeah, it was awesome. It was so much fun. Um, ben Hansen was the lead in it. He now yep. has a couple paranormal shows. Um, he's he's absolutely incredible. We did one that was called, um, it was called like Mystical Treasure Quest or something. It was a, it was a show that was about all like finding, you know, um, Ark of the Covenant and looking for the Holy Grail and all that kind of stuff. And we actually went around and <laughs> dug it up and looked at everything. We had a whole bunch. We had a, a, a running series of probably four or five different shows on, on sci-fi. Um, we had a, uh, like a, a, something that was very similar with Jack Osborne. Um, it was called paranormal highway. Yeah. yeah. It was, Jack's, it, it a was good, so cool. Jack's a good friend of ours. Yeah. I was just having yep. ice cream with Jack and his children about a month ago. Yeah, absolutely. Jack, you know, Jack, what was incredible about that, that show is, is, uh, you know, first of all, he's an amazing guy. Yeah. And, you know, his his whole battle with MS was unbelievable. But he actually was diagnosed with MS while we were shooting that show. Oh, sure. Ooh. And it was crazy. So you have somebody call in and say, oh, I'm really sick. I think I might have MS. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, you know, your first thought in your mind is, Jack, that can't possibly be true. Yeah, it's yeah. And it's, it was true. <laughs> and not only was he a trooper about it, not only was he like, Look, I'm, you know, we're going to muscle our way through it. He was unbelievable. He's just one of those people that you meet that is so intelligent and articulate and yep. thoughtful. He's the one that pointed out to me that one of the reasons why the Osbournes was so successful, and I didn't remember this, is that it came out of in December of 2001. And he's like, uh, everybody wanted something to laugh about. Yeah. That, and look, that, and, that that's what's happening with us today. We just got our ratings um, yesterday for our entire media network for Tetherball Academy Media. This is the highest we've had in our history. Across all of our shows. Across too. all it's of like our shows. Our, our sports show is number six. Our, our, yeah, Drinking Bros Sports is number six in the world. Drinking Bros, uh, you know, the rest the, of the, the show, comedy-wise, comedy right? we're number 15 in the world. <laughs> and it's we've gone every single day. Ross Patterson Revolution is number seven in the world. We've gone every single day 
during you know the the quarantine so that way people will have entertainment that makes total sense man it does it does it's really smart because jack was saying you know if it had if the osbournes came out any other time he's like he might have just been dismissed as kind of like you know quirky weird but not necessarily all that funny and he's like it was funny because people needed something to laugh about and he's like my family truly is one of a kind family <laughs> oh yeah absolutely so, absolutely they all are uh, all right, Brankus, we're, we're going to get deep into this. I pulled out a uh, bottle of Jameson here. Um, That's right. I, I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm, I'm dug in <laughs> for tonight's episode. Let's start with your favorite conspiracy theory. There is gun to head. What is your number one with a bullet conspiracy theory? You know, all right, here I'm going to start this by say, making sure the audience understands. <laughs> I am I, like we're going to define what a conspiracy theorist is. Okay. And I'm going to. I'm going to define a conspiracy theorist is somebody who blindly believes that uh, an alternate truth must be true because it's the opposite of what the mainstream has told you. I am not a conspiracy theorist, but what I am is someone who's very thoughtful. Okay. Someone who says, okay, here's the story that I've been told. Now let me just consider facts and see if they back up that story. And if they don't, then very frequently, if we are to, if we're to take anything um, that that's <laughs> a theory or a story that's been told to us, I want everyone to apply, sort of like apply the rules of a trial. I don't have to tell you what did happen. All I have to do is prove to you what didn't happen. Yeah. So if I'm rep- if I'm representing a client and he's accused of murder, I don't have to <laughs> prove who did murder somebody. I just have to tell you my client didn't do it. Sure. So with that in mind, the first one that I I would launch into, (laughs) I think a really good one, I think a really good one that provides a lot of thought is 9-11. Gives you a lot of thought. Okay. So, and and yeah, so is this the one where the buildings were rigged up with uh, explosives? So here, here are just some facts that I want everyone to fit into the narrative. Now, I'm going to say right up front, the government did not conspire. The government did not have anything to do with 9-11. I do not know what the truth of 9-11 is. All I know is there are some elements that are very interesting to point out and make you say, huh, the official story just doesn't entirely add up and there's even things written in the official report that admits it doesn't know what happened so i i want to make sure that that's clear before i say anything because i don't want anybody to say brinkus thinks the government covered it up or the government they did it they get the government can't deliver mail on time that's funny so 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 when we were on alex jones we did a show with alex jones and i asked him and he said yes because he produced those movies i think it was uh something for change um right uh, uh, loose change. That's it. Loose change. Um, and uh, Dan, you said the same thing. He's Dan said on air. He said, "Look, man, the government is too stupid to do that. Like they they could never pull their shit together to do something like nine eleven. Yeah, there's no way no. With, without it leaking. In, in, no way, right? I mean, they, they can't deliver mail on time. They yeah. can't. I mean, like, just think about it. Like, look, the DMV is a mess. Spread by the government. Yeah. Like, you don't have a mastermind group. So. Don't, that's where it's like a conspiracy theorist is like, oh man, Bush was hiding it and they planned it. I'm like, do you really think George W. Bush sat around and said, you know what's a good idea? We should fly some planes into the World Trade Center. That might work. Yeah. Like that's not that's not at all what happened. So but as I sort of present some facts, all that I all that I intend on giving people uh, or wanting people to think about is oh wow maybe the story we've been given isn't the whole story i i'm not going to tell you what the story is i'm just going to tell you what the story is not okay and the story what it is not is the official stories 19 guys hijacked some planes flew them into buildings the buildings collapsed from heat that was it game over right right now it's so but i'm going to first start with with it with 9 11 now think about this pearl harbor we know no, over time, over decades of time, we know that the official story of Pearl Harbor changed, right? We all we we know that, right? Story of nine eleven. Think about it; it's almost twenty years old. Twenty years from now, if it 
doesn't change, it will be the first world event that whose narrative has never changed. So it has to be wrong. It's never been challenged. There hasn't been anything that's an alternative theory, which makes me say, God, that's really weird. Either they nailed it right. I mean, we know 100% what happened. Or don't you think that maybe it's only 90% correct and there's 10% that's kind of craziness that that it didn't like, that's happen. That's what yeah. we're going to find out. Yeah. That, 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 all right, so here, let's think about this. Here, here's a fact. In the history of modern architecture, of concrete and steel buildings, in the history, how many buildings have collapsed due to fire in the history of the world? Man, I don't know that answer. Um, the Oklahoma I, City... I, building but there was an explosion right underneath it but ultimately it collapsed because of fire but i mean it's you know there was it, also no, an explosion collapsed. there was an explosion yeah i mean there's so also duty, an explosion. right so <clears throat> in 9 11 prior to 9 11 there are no buildings you can look it up there there are awesome there's awesome footage of buildings that have been in fire for days there have been buildings that have been compromised but they don't fall and they don't fall on their own. Not only do they not fall because it's made of concrete and steel, but they don't fall onto their own footprint. So what I would, what I would throw out there and say, just think about this. And again, I'm not saying I'm not, I, look, I, you, what you're going to hear a lot from me is I don't know what did happen. All I know is it's awfully strange that my buildings fell on their own footprints. One of them being world trade center seven, wasn't even struck by anything, didn't have any explosives planted in it. It just fell. So when you say, well, how many buildings and prior to that date, zero, and then on that day, it's three, and they all happen in a two block radius, one of them not being compromised. And when you read the official report, the official report, do you know what the cause of World Trade, Sever, uh, World Trade Center 7 is in the official report? No, what is I don't it? know. I don't know. Oh, that's what it says. So it physically <laughs> says it in the says. report, I don't know. We don't know. I, Man. And you could, everybody can look it up. You, I read the report cover to cover. It just says, yeah, World Trade Center 7 fell. We're not sure why. So, so, if so to, to you, what yep. would be the most plausible thing then? If it, if it was not our government, what do you think it was? I I can't even advance a theory of any kind. All that I would say is those buildings, it, something brought down World Trade Center 7. The answer of I don't know for a, a building to collapse, it, like that's a little bit of a – that's a kind of a cop-out answer, right? Yeah. All I can tell you is, well, the answer isn't I don't know. It's something compromised the structure of that building. That's what made it fall. And – no planes hit it. No bombs were planted. I mean, something caused it for the structure to be compromised. Therefore, the story of like, well, these planes flew in the buildings and the buildings fell. Well, that building wasn't struck. It didn't have any explosives. So, you know, I don't know. What I don't know what to say. Yeah. What about you, Dan? Do you have any alternate theories or do you think what happened actually <laughs> happened? Um, no, it's never the, the government story is never the right one. Right. Right. Um, I would say just from what I've heard about it, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a secondary attack of some sort, like additional explosives or whatever the case is, like suicide bombers or something like that. Uh huh. From yeah. inside the building? Like the problem with people in science is that if they don't find a very ready and easily understandable fucking explanation for something, they just start making crazy shit up. Sure. Like religion, right. for yeah. example. Yeah. Um, so. They think that because um, one time this dude danced and it rained the next day, that dancing causes rain. That's fucking stupid. You know what I mean? Right. But that's how human beings are, are trained to, th to think. It's okay to not know. I think I don't know being an answer to that. Is f I'm fine with that logic as long as that's true. I don't think it's, it's probably not true. But, uh, yeah, if you were um, – <clears throat> <clears throat> what we know about al-Qaeda is they don't – they're known for complex attacks, mm -hmm. like primary and secondary right. attacks, like drawing people in and then blowing shit up. Like the guy at the – one of the things we were worried about at the uh, – before that shooting happened at the Mall of the Americas, 
was somebody doing a mass shooting, waiting for a bunch of first responders to arrive and then detonating a, an asbest. Okay. Right. Like getting a bunch of people in one spot and then blowing yourself up or whatever the case is. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just about instilling fear or committing the act of terrorism itself. It's about doing something that's, that's, um, that attacks the infrastructure of the country. Right. Whether it's the economy or first responders or whatever it is. So I could definitely see dudes climbing up the buildings that already haven't been there <clears throat> with explosives. Yeah. So one of the – here's something that's interesting to consider is one of the big um, – one of the big sort of theories out there is that the planes that hit the building weren't commercial airline planes, right? That, 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 that's sort of just been put out there. No, they weren't planes. So we actually, as, as part of one of the shows that we were doing with Sci-Fi, I pitched the idea. I said, you know what's interesting? If you go on the internet and you actually search every photo and video of the planes that struck the building, mm -hmm. there's there's actually no footage of discernible logos on any of the planes. And immediately people go, oh, well, what do you think? You know, well, what do you think those things are? And I'm saying, look, I, I look, I think they're commercial airliners. I think commercial airliners flew into this building. But if I had to prove it in a court of law with visual evidence of the most photographed terrorist event ever, I mean, yeah. one building, one building gets hit, then every tourist, every news station, everyone has a camera trained on the second building unknowingly, mm -hmm. right? The plane comes flying in and there are no pictures or videos of discernible logos. I, so I said, well, should there be? What if we were to fly a plane at the same height, same time, use the same 2001 technology, uh -huh. shoot it from every angle, and see, should you be able to see the logos? Because it's a little <laughs> weird. So when you go on the internet and you go down the rabbit hole and you're like, nah, you know, Brinkus is wrong. You can, you can see logos very clearly. Post it. Like, I, we couldn't find any logos on the planes. That I am not saying they aren't commercial airliners. I'm saying that people who say, hey, they're not commercial airliners, there's no actual visual proof that those are the planes. Then people say, but what happened to the planes? I mean, we know the people who were on those planes perished. We know that. Well, we also know that the transponders were turned off. So in playing into the, well, maybe they aren't commercial airliners, why don't you turn a transponder off fly a plane into the middle of the ocean who knows where or god knows where but those planes disappeared from radar so it's hard to connect those planes with the planes that hit the building through proof of like visual proof and not only that there's no dna recovered from the from the site there's no body you know bodies recovered from the site that are identifiable it's very hard to actually prove that even though we all kind of know it happened it's very strange that you can't prove it. Yeah, yes and no. So there's a, a friend of mine who was supposed to be on that flight. He overslept. The one from Boston to L.A. that yep. crashed into the building. His name is Brian yep. Curry. He actually right. went on to write The Green Book. and won, He won two Oscars for that movie, The Green Book, uh, yep. the year before last. And right. uh, we, you know, we were in L.A. because he was flying back. And then we had a party for him. Uh, at, at one of our buddies' houses, and right. he came in to the party and dropped that airline ticket on the, the table, and then we discussed all of it all the way around. It would be, f to me, fucking next to impossible to fake those deaths of those people coming out of Boston. And I, could you fly it into the ocean? Maybe, but at, at that time that it <laughs> happened... I, I like that one is unbelievable to me. Now the buildings falling at the same time, exactly where they were in motion. I can land some, you know, all right. I, I can land some maybe credence, I guess, to that one a little bit, but uh, a lot of people don't even today realize that those two buildings were full of government uh, like agencies. Right. Yes. So like C yes. CIA had yep. stuff in there. Fucking yeah. the secret service had stuff yep. in there. One of the theories is that there was a controlled detonation to protect sensitive classified material. And that that so that, that that would make sense to me. But a controlled debt for material like that isn't a fucking bomb that would blow up a building. It's a fucking thermite grenade or something like that. Like right. that, that would do no structural damage. I mean it would cause a much hotter fire. Yeah. Maybe. 
Um, well, and, they, but that fire did burn for weeks. Yeah. Like that's that's part of the you know part of people sort of leaning into it. And part of the the plane theory here here's what's interesting about the plane theory. Again, I don't want anybody to to say, oh my god, what are you saying? I, look, I think planes flew into the building. I like I'm sold on that. What I'm playing into is the okay. Well, if you had to prove it, if you if you a thousand years from now they say, what evidence do you have? You're like, okay, do you have any pictures of the actual planes with discernible logos? Not it looks like a commercial airliner. It's do you have the actual pictures? Secondly, if you go into you, everybody remembers TWA 800. Yes. Right. Yeah. So that's another whole a whole conspiracy where people are like God. It was shot down. You can see the missile. But what did we get from TWA 800? You they reclaimed every scrap of metal from that plane and put it back together in a hang in a hangar. Right. They scooped it out of the ocean. They put it back together prior to 9-11. And this is another good one to look up. How many planes, just like the how many buildings, how many planes have crashed and not been put back together or not even attempted to be put back together? By the FAA. Yeah, and you're right on that one because the the big one was uh, that one that got Shanksville blown out in uh, Iran. Um, right. So even that one, you know, they were like, "Hey, put it back together. we're going to put it back together." And then the Iranian government came out and we're scooping it up in fields, and they were like, "No, we're not fucking doing that shit. We're getting it out of here." Well, uh, look, I, so I, I understand every one of those planes get put, gets put back together. In this instance, I, I know the one that that fell in the field. Um, the, the, the passengers crash in that field. I know they put that one back together, um, but the two, they, in, the two in the did, like find the photo of it being put back together because it's not. It actually is. Dis, it actually in the official report is it claims it disintegrated. The one in the like, field. Look it, look it up. The, the one in the field in Shanksville. Yeah, yeah. Look at the pic. Yeah, look at the pictures of of it. It disintegrated. What is it? It was United ninety three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. United ninety three. Well, that's what I was going to bring up about all this. Uh, so United ninety three, just prior to the plane crashing, there were oh, there were thirty phone calls made from that plane. Yes, to loved ones, yep. voicemails, live conversations had. Uh, let's see, on flight seventy seven, there were three calls. Flight one seventy five, there were five calls, and there were three calls from flight eleven. That's all four planes made phone calls right uh -huh. right before this shit happened. So the idea that we could fly them out into the middle of the ocean seems implausibly. Same. Maybe. Totally. Yep. Maybe. Who knows, right? But totally. uh, like I, I don't like <sighs> the guy I know the government is too incompetent to do something like this. And it's they not, did it, they they had nothing to do with it. Yeah, it's not yeah. just about incompetence, it's also about you can't keep that many people's mouths shut. But if you're a terror organization and everybody who's involved is going to die, that's pretty easy to keep quiet. Sure. Because everybody's fucking dead. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, any, anything they could have slipped in there, none of that would surprise me. Right. Yeah. It's just, and and a, plane, was, a plane flying into a building, by the way, like the, the two that flew into the, uh, the towers, um, with the towers going down and the whole fucking shit going up, like I don't know how you would even attempt to put a plane back together from that. But, but what do you try? Well, they were trying to dig out survivors. I remember that for mm -hmm. how many days that was. So, I don't know. It was long. It was and long they time. were just, they had trouble getting workers and it, in and out. So they were clearing it out with like wheelbarrows and like, you know, traditional things that you wouldn't do because much right. like the COVID-19 thing, you were faced with a situation that you hadn't been in before, at least in, Ameri hadn't been in, before. in, in America. Yeah. So totally. the, the, it's, the, the it's, tried and true methods are out the window at that point. Exactly. What, what was interesting in, in one of the shows that we were pitching is just trying to debunk the wacko theories that they weren't planes and saying, okay, well, we're going to show pictures that they're commercial airliners. Well, those don't exist. Okay. We're going to, we're going to show pictures of the planes reassembled. Well, those don't exist. Well, we're going to prove that the buildings fell because of the heat or something. Well, no buildings have ever, that's never happened before. You keep reaching these points where you're like, God, a lot of things happened on that day that had never happened before. Is the official story 100% correct, or are we going to learn, oh, you know what, this, th I don't know what the alternative truth is or what the other story is. It just seems like, wow, the, the, the proving of it is difficult. Now, I'm not saying that, that it didn't happen. I'm saying, God, that's an interesting, 
that's an interesting mm. question to at least <laughs> ask. Oh, for yeah. sure. Another interesting question for me, and I've never gotten a satisfactory answer about this, is why within a matter of hours were 24 of Osama bin Laden's family members skirted out of this country? Flown out. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a real like weird the, one for the, me. The Saudi yeah. ambassador made a phone call, and he was like, hey, we have to get everybody related to him out of this country right. now. Yeah. And right. look, there were some uh, attacks against mostly Sikhs and Indians because Americans are too dumb to tell the difference between Arabs and other people uh -huh. uh, in the early 2000s. But it wasn't like – I don't think anybody was going to go hunt down – a great grandnephew of Osama bin Laden and stabbed to death or anything, right? Right. Like that whole. I don't. I don't know what the what the deal with that is. So honestly. So wrap. So <laughs> wrapping up nine eleven. Here's 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 the here's an interesting thing that I've certainly observed. I mean, I'm I'm asking curious questions and I'm not offering any sort of like, oh, this is what happened. I'm answering. I I'm saying, look, I've done tons of research. And the fact that there aren't pictures, the fact that there were no buildings prior to that, the fact that these are the only planes to not have been reassembled, it makes it an impossible story to really try to solve to ignore, because of yeah. those that, right? Yeah. And it, it's like, oh my God, those are, there's a lot of missing stuff on that. What I find even more interesting is, I don't know how interested people are on actually finding out the truth. I kind of feel like, <laughs> that, like whatever the truth is, it's probably something we're better off perhaps not knowing it on, on that one because it happened, we're past it, we're moving on. Yeah. But all I know is the official story, there are lots of holes in it. There are a lot of things that are, it admits, I mean, to admit a building fell and we don't know why. All right, well, someday we'll learn why. And that why may, you know, open up a, a rabbit hole for us that we go down forever. But we as a people and we as a country, we probably don't really want to know. And we're like, eh. We're, we're not going to invest that much en mental energy into it because it kind of is what it is at this whole point, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's why we wanted to have you on the show to discuss this. Like, I enjoy the fact yep. that we have three people who are open to possibilities, but not totally. one way down of like, no, this is how it happened, and there's no other way. Because we get that a lot. We've done some mm. Colin shows, <laughs> and we get that a lot where people are like, you don't understand. I knew a cousin of a brother who was there and did this and this. And it's like, right. man, I – you have no proof or evidence of that, but it's it's fun to entertain different theories because you, we really don't know and we don't have the answer. If we did, somebody else would have it too. Right, and we should. I mean, I think on science, I mean, look, I've, I've made a living off of doing science, science, science. Do you know how many times we've revised science? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like, look, you know, people take science as gospel and I take it as, well, it's the most recent suggestion that seems to work the mm. most consistently. And then sure. we're going to come across something where it doesn't really work. You know, you look at the laws of aerodynamics with lift and drag, and the bumblebee still doesn't fit into our current equation. Yeah, right. And you're like, but we haven't modified the equation, but we know it's not right. Yeah, ne neither is the just, hummingbird. There's also no... Uh... There's no kind of agreement between quantum physics and yeah. like gravity, for example. Like we have no fact, idea yeah. how to how yeah, to get those two together. Exactly, and that's when 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 I get frustrated by just as much as the people who are like, dude, just be you know, just because you question it, you must be a conspiracy theory nut. I'm like, I, dude, I question science. I question everything. Yeah. I just want to know where we get to the truth by if you ask enough questions. And if the answers aren't totally satisfactory, then you find out the truth somehow. If the truth stands up and you constantly get satisfactory answers, then you're good. Like, oh, okay, so it does, it can stand up to scrutiny. And people who aren't willing to question frustrate me just as much as people who automatically assign, oh, it's a conspiracy because my Uncle Louie knew a guy who told him this. Mm. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. So, look, since this topic is everywhere now, let's talk about COVID-19. Um, sure. I've read a lot of conspiracy theories on this, that it was it, it could be, you know, some type of germ warfare, um, that it was made in a lab and that it was, you know, put out to the world. Uh, a lot of people are, have used like the Social Security thing of like, great, it's a good way to get rid of old people. Uh, or the sick in countries, uh, people who aren't contributing to society as much as everybody else. Blah, blah, blah. Do you think there is any conspiracy to the, the COVID-19 right now? So there, there, to me, there's an extreme amount of just 
odd things happen mm. yeah. that that make me say, I think I think there might I think there just might be more to the story, and I don't even know if it's intentional. But to say a virus broke out and half the world just shut down, yeah, I'm like, okay, so let's take the numbers of the number of people who have died, the number of people who have been infected, and let's say what are the actions that are taking place. If you told me, and th this is a true stat as of last night, as of last night, uh, in Los Angeles, in, in Los, Los Angeles, Angeles yep. 90 people so far have died from coronavirus. There are 10 million people just in L.A. Yeah. That's point. Zero 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 nine. Yeah. Now, and if you said to me, but they had to shut down the whole city, a true fact in the month of March, more people committed suicide than died from the coronavirus. And when you, when you say, God, when we start doing the math on 500,000 people in the world to date have died from AIDS, 3 million people to date have died from heart disease. 7,000 people a day die in America every day. 15,000 people die from falling down the stairs. Twenty, you know, 40,000 people have died in car crashes. When you start throwing out big numbers and then you start comparing them to the corona numbers, I'm not saying that the, that coronavirus isn't real, that it doesn't exist. I'm saying that the reaction based on the reality of the numbers just seems so far out of whack that it requires us to at least question, does the world really need to be <laughs> shut down? It yeah. just it just yeah. boggles my mind. I always ask anytime a situation like this occurs, qui bono, who benefits from this? Like just that's that yeah. that's the skeptic's first line of defense. Like, oh, sure. all right, let's figure this out. Who benefits from this happening? Yep. Because then you could find out if there's any kind of motive behind it. Um, if if we're looking at any kind of, and I am not a uh, globalist, like I'm not Alex Jones, is what I'm saying. Right. Uh, I don't think there's some kind of international cabal working together to make a new world. I don't believe that. But let's say there was for sake of argument. What better way to get people used to and force people into that kind of thing than this right now? Like you're converting, yeah. you're converting everybody over to telemedicine. You're converting everybody over to shopping more online. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting them dependent to digital media. You're getting them dependent to daily government fucking uh, briefings. Uh, briefings. Yeah. Here's a question I have for you guys. Yeah. Think of this. Just just think of this for a second. So we can also reverse engineer, okay, what's going on? Do we think that this is some kind of Trumpian, you know, conspiracy or master plan? No way. I mean, 0% chance. There's no way Donald Trump's like, you know what would be great right now? A, a, a massive pandemic. Yeah, let's that fuck up this economy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. fuck up the that economy. that would only hurt his election. Yeah. His, his, his re-election, yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. So you're like, <laughs> all right, you eliminate that. Then you say, all right, I, I, I just, I, I find this odd. So the governor, so Gavin Newsom, the the governor of uh, California, California. Yeah. shut down California, uh, and and I ask, can you do that? Like, like where does it say? And the governor, for whatever reason he feels like he should, can shut the state down, can shut every business down. And when people say, well. The president has wartime powers. The governor can exercise his own discretion. I'm like, okay, so let's take that to its ridiculous extreme. What if he's just in a bad mood? Yeah. yeah. Is he is he allowed to just say, hey, <laughs> all businesses are closed because the data right at the second certainly does not support everybody must remain inside or else right. we're all dying. You know, it's like very few people have died. And you've shut down the whole state without anybody voting. None of the state yeah. legislature had to say. It's yeah. just strange. Yeah, and, and a lot of those, two two points on that. One is a lot of those uh, uh, governor levels, like statewide level takeovers, and even at the mayoral level, give them weird powers, like the ability to shut down gun stores, for example. Right. Which seems like, why would that even be in there? That I, That of all the stuff that you could add into a piece of legislation, why would emergency authority allow you to shut down gun stores yeah it, 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 look there's a lot of strange 
things going on. I will say this today in New York, their stat was 562 people died today of coronavirus in, in the state of New York. Uh, is there a possibility that California is just following suit because all of the international travel in and out is pretty much coming through LAX or LaGuardia or JFK in New York. Are they following suit just to be careful? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, it, it, it's, it, there is many questions on this. I find with this one, with China in particular, just fucking China, dude. Right. I have a hard time believing that this wasn't planned and just backfired somewhere. Like the, the uncooked bat story from a, you know, a local market. And then it started with a, a shrimp you know, salesman out of uh, some fucking off the boat thing. It just seems too far fetched to me to kill this many people and spread around the world this quickly. So I would say I, I would side with when people say, "Do you think it was intentional or not?" I'll, I'm going to render a, a, a an opinion on this. I don't think it's. I personally don't think it's possible that this could have been an intentional release. I agree. The reason the reason being is you can't control the outcome. Right. 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 So like it could be intentional. So let's say it's unintentional. But let's say that this unintentional thing is kind of like any other world event where. People are taking advantage of, oh, event X is happening. Now's the perfect time to implement the Y thing that I've been, you know, sitting on forever. You know, when you, when you look at sort of shutdowns, and, and I think it is very useful for us to say, all right, let's say that Gavin Newsom and, and all the other governors that, you know, the governor um, of Virginia shut down the state till June 10th. Yeah. I mean, it's April 3rd now or 4th or whatever day. Yeah. It's like, I don't even know what day it is. It's like we've shut down till June 10th. So my question is, if they're being proactive on, I guess, saving lives, mm -hmm. why why does that end with coronavirus? I mean, why, why do we say, well, coronavirus is gone, so I'm now fine with people dying from any other condition, right, but right. I'm not <laughs> fine with corona? Because as soon as you lift it and you're like, dude, more people are dying from hepatitis than died from coronavirus. Well, I'm fine with hepatitis. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like, the, it's a very insincere concern of like, hey, I'm only concerned about – if you're that concerned about human life, then why do you let people drive at all? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it's the it's concerned. the old adage: the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? I mean, any who whomever is making a, a a noise or whomever is making noise out there, and at this point, obviously, it's only the media, yeah, that's doing yeah. that. Um, I guess that's who gets the that's who gets the grease. I I agree. I just uh, to to me personally, I'm with you. Like, if you're not in this age range or have this you know respiratory problems or whatever, like go go back to work at this point because you're right. People are gonna <laughs> die more from car accidents tomorrow, the flu. Uh, smoking, you name it. Um, and then we have some breaking news on this. Another CNN anchor just got it. Brooke Baldwin. Now, this is yep. different from Cuomo, and I'll tell you why. She's hot, and I don't want to see <laughs> oh, attractive young women get this and have to stay home, um, you know, especially when they could be out in these streets. Mm -hmm. So that one, that one, I hate seeing supermodels die and porn stars as well. So I should, I pr should probably preface it with that. I probably should have yeah. with you. Those are the two. Well, those are kind of a given. Yeah, but, but we but don't know each sure. other that well, John. <laughs> so I, I want, I want you to get to know me first. Exactly. Um, Good to make sure. So my theory is this: I think it was built in a lab because D Dan and I did a show about six months ago where they were yeah. genetic, genetically altering animals and humans mm -hmm. to put like human faces on monkeys and shit like that. And then that scientist got killed. The one who was doing the CRISPR babies got killed. Uh, they scooped up the one for the coronavirus. I think the guy was, that was the whistleblower and he died. Yeah, he real did. Yeah, he died real quick. I think this was something made in a lab and then it got away from them. And uh, and now here we are. Because I find it weird that it's only killing a segment of the population that really doesn't doesn't contribute as much as the rest of society and if if one country was going to do it to me it would be china where all it is is work 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 like you know well china's got a history of eugenics anyways yeah I, even recently so it's that wouldn't be very surprising to hear that they're up to something over there and and i think the final to me the verdict right now is this was totally unplanned there's no way they could possibly have planned it got away from them somehow agreed and yeah. there's a there's a collective taking advantage of misfortune going on politically. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I, and it's, and it's, it's so 
far overreaching beyond anything this country has ever seen. It's just, to me, it, re it requires us to say, can't, I mean, do we, the fact that this has happened, do we want this to be able to happen again? I mean, do, don't you think somebody's going to run on the platform of, look, if the next mm. pandemic comes along and we can isolate it to, you know, pe only people six foot five and taller are dying, right. I'm not going to lock everybody up. I'm going to say, if you're six, five or taller, you got to stay in. Everybody else, party on. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I think, uh, not, not that I necessarily wish for things to go wrong, but it would be... It, w it might be important for this pandemic for it to get to a breaking point where people freak the fuck out and never want this again. Because if you remember, for years before the American Revolution, most people in general were irritated by the English and the tax stuff, but they were willing to accept it because everything was generally peaceful and whatever mm -hmm. the fuck, right? Once things started to get bleak, people were like, fuck this. This is never going to happen again. We're going to organize... Yeah our entire government around this never happening again. Right. So I think maybe reaching a precipice like that is an important step because we've gone down these weird rabbit holes a lot the last decade, the cancel culture, Me Too bullshit, right. for example. And if we let it go too far, right. then it becomes part of daily life. And I don't think we're, we're not doing anything yet to make sure this just doesn't become daily life because I don't want to live in a world where people aren't out doing stuff same. Like that's not that's bullshit. Or we wearing have, masks. I don't we, want to wear masks no. through the streets every we goddamn may, we day. We may as well life. just die if that's going to be the case. So I agree. Think, well, okay. think of this. Think of this. Just to wrap up the, uh, this thing. Think of this. Think of how irresponsible it is for. And look, I, I look. I'm neither. I am neither a Trump hater or a Trump supporter. I'm. I'm much more just a centrist who's like some things are good, some things are bad. And, sure. You know, I can. I can kind of take it with a grain of salt. But think about how irresponsible it is to message. Hey, the fatality rate on this thing is two or three percent. That's why we have to lock down the country because two or three percent is ten times higher than the flu. This thing is super deadly. Then yesterday, Fauci's like, "Oh, actually, the death rate is more like the common flu, and it's probably more one percent or below." Yeah. So I say, "Well, if we started there at the fatality rate, really was only one percent or below." Would you ever have shut something down? And it's probably not. It's really basic statistics too. Like you know, right? you know, there's something called breakage, and it's data that doesn't make its way into your data set because mm -hmm. people don't report the right way, or they false yeah. positive or negative, whatever the case is. In marketing, it's about thirty percent. In this case, who the fuck knows? I mean, it's probably about the same right. as a census. You know what I mean? Like, how accurate is that stupid bullshit? And right. getting people to report, self-report stuff. Look, you remember for the first month of this, there weren't tests out there so most of those people just went through it all yeah without yeah. fucking ever and, getting tested yeah and the overreaching powers so think about this so the scary virus if we had to devise the ultimate boogeyman wouldn't you say okay it's a virus but if you don't think you have it you're a carrier and you could infect somebody else and <laughs> there was a story yesterday it said one in three of all negative tests are false negative test so even if you don't have symptoms even if you test negative you still probably have it and are probably going to infect somebody but still even with all of that being said the bottom line is dude if i'm going to read the package on this what's the death what's the fatality rate i can handle being sick yeah but what's the chance of me dying from this thing uh 99.9 percent .9 you're gonna live i'll take those odds yeah like that's all right i'm good with that yeah, and, and look, to put a bow on this, for me personally, if if I had a dream outcome that came out of this, I'd love for us to completely shut out China altogether as the United States. We don't depend on them to make shit anymore, goods, deficit money, anything else. Like You, you can't trust that country and what is going on, um, and you, you never could, to be honest with you. Now, with, with all the shit they're doing genetically over there, I just want to yeah. lock that country out and, you know, hopefully bring goods and everything back here. I know that's a, probably a pipe dream, and I understand that, but that would be my dream outcome out of this because I'm tired of the bullshit that, that is going on over there and what we don't know on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'd like to just see it just flip the switch That on would it. collapse our economy 
in a matter of weeks. It would, but, and it, here's but why. if, if because it's going China, to collapse China, anyways. China would call in the markers on all the debt that we owe them, which is only about $4 trillion, is not that much money. Right, was, um, which is what we're spending on right. this so far, on, yeah, on yeah. this virus. But they would call in the markers for their debt. I, we would have to tell them, no, we're not paying it. And then our credit rating globally would be zero. We would lose our status as the world global reserve currency right. and all this stuff would happen. So that's not going to happen, I can tell you now. I wish you would. I think the good... <laughs> I think the uh, good outcome from this is people learn uh, humans die all the time and they die from viruses. They die from accidents. They die from negligence. They die accidentally. Yep. They die from all kinds of crazy stuff. Sometimes, all the time. sometimes and, they're married to OJ or Carol Baskin. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or, Carol exactly. Baskin, or Carol so. Baskin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, if there's one good thing to come out of this, it's that we're all incredibly curious about having meat grinders in a backyard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Exactly. Uh, it is exactly. a perfect point to get to our first sponsor. Since you're on the show today and you work for Kill Cliff, as do That's we, right. uh, we're going to get to KillCliffCBD.com. KillCliffCBD.com. Uh, promo code Drinking Bros will get you 30% off and free shipping. They also sent Dan this nifty gold chain. If you're subscribed to our, our YouTube channel, Drinking Bros Podcast, you'll see oh, yeah. Yeah, Dan is know. blinged up with a Kill Cliff chain. And uh, you can get blinged up with cans of CBD, 25 milligrams in every single can, shipped directly to your door. You will not piss hot if you are in uh, the military first responder area or if you're an NBA player. Fuck it. Um, they don't, across the board. I don't think they test for weed anymore. Uh, who? The yeah. NBA. Uh, no, the NFL does. Um, or does not. They just struck no, that the, one, but the, I believe M the NBA, NBA still does, and, right? I, I think Major League Baseball and the NBA both got rid of it. Oh, good for them. Fucking yeah. A. Good for them. Drink up. Drink up. Go, go to KillCliffCBD.com. Promo code Drinking Bros. 30% off grape, mango, uh, and the orange kush. Mm -hmm. All of them are amazing and uh, knocks it down to shit. What, what you reckon there? About uh, 290 a can, 280 a can? Cheaper than a can of Monster. Yes. And they got, it's got 25 milligrams of CBD in it. It does. Absolutely. Kill Cliff uh, is doing incredibly good things during this pandemic. Help yes, they out are. First responders. And, you know, it's an amazing brand. So support Kill Cliff. Go yes. to killcliff.com. I think yes. we should open up a fucking mortuary. Right now be the time. Let's do oh. it. Yeah. Let's, let's just let's make a fucking. Can we is there any way to put uh, uh, an incinerator in the back of a truck? Yeah, why just, not? Just, just, just drive, drive by. Just drive around town. <laughs> it says got dead. Question mark yeah. on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Dude, this is going to be, it's gonna be the, the, uh, the opening scene of Life of Brian. Yeah. By Bring out your dad. Bring out your dad. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like ice cream truck music. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so all the kids run outside and like, hey, go get Uncle Jimmy. I know he's dead. Yeah, I know Bring he's him dead. Out here. We'll yeah, burn him up for you right quick. Drag out Uncle Jimmy for me, would you? Just yeah. Drag him out. <laughs> and we'll put him in. We'll cut the tops off of these Kill Clip CBD cans and put the ashes uh, in there and hand it back to yeah, him. Yeah, it's a nice urn. Yeah, I heard there's crazy. an urn shortage right now. Yeah. Uh, I want to get to the next one here. The, right behind me is, is yeah. one of my one, my favorite uh, signed pictures. One of the Drinking Bros set it in uh, anonymously last year for Christmas. We hung it up. Signed by yeah. Buzz Aldrin. This is the moon yeah. landing. Um, Woo. <laughs> it's a what, good one. What is what is the conspiracy theory uh, behind the moon landing? Other than all the footage was faked and we never landed on the moon, and Stanley Kubrick did it. Man, <laughs> I'll tell you what. The, so we did a show on the moon landing, and we actually uh, you should go back if you, you can look it up. Factor fake paranormal files all about the moon landing, and there is an expert who we had on who was commissioned by by uh, NASA to just put an end to the argument and look, we went to the moon, just give everybody the evidence. He was like the independent third party. Uh -huh. And he, we found this dude and we, he ended up coming on. This is one of the only shows, the only shows where I say, wow, here are some <laughs> serious questions that we have to ask. Really? Uh, now here are some serious questions. <clears throat> now I'm going to say this first, just so people don't jump out of their skin. We went to the moon. Yes, we rock. We're Americans. We're awesome. We went to the moon. So don't say, Breaky says I think we went to the moon. We went to the moon. Now, okay. consider this. Think of this. We're not going to the moon was not settling a bar bet. We were not like, I got 10 bucks riding on this. This was establishing us as a, as a the only yep. true superpower. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> yeah. First one to the moon wins. And JFK, now, JFK was the one driving this of like, hey, we got we to gotta beat the Russians and the Chinese to this. So if you, as a TV producer myself, when you're told, hey, we're making a show and we have to have our money shot. We've got to have, if we don't have this shot, it doesn't work. So if the president gets everybody in the room and says, guys, listen, Wednesday, 6 o'clock, Walter Cronkite is going to announce that we landed on the moon. If we don't have footage of it, no one's ever going to believe us. And I don't care what you have to do. <laughs> you make sure we have footage. I, I don't need to know. I don't need to be in on it. I don't need to know anything. Nobody has to tell me anything. In fact, you don't have to tell anybody else. I, we cannot fail. So as a TV producer, I say, all right, so now let's run the odds on this. You've got a camera that's a quote camera that gets put on a spaceship that goes to the moon that's used with no viewfinder from a non-professional in an environment that's never been, never had anything ever used before. Mm -hmm. And the framing is perfect. It's in focus. It's like nothing goes wrong. It, it goes seamless. And then you say, okay, so how do those images get back to us? They get beamed down to, they first went to Australia. Then it went over to Houston uh, uh, in Texas. Then it goes over to uh, Cape Canaveral. Then the images, this is all true. Then the image is projected on the screen. The news organizations all had their cameras pointed at a white screen that was showing these images that went from the moon to Australia to Texas to Florida. That's why the that's why it looks so grainy and so messed up, mm -hmm. and it's at a weird angle. At a weird angle, then you say, okay, so that that all happened in real time seamlessly, and nothing went wrong. So let's go back and find the original tapes the original footage of it you all can google this nasa lost the original tapes those tapes don't exist and so now you say as a tv producer you're like god if i had to make sure that i that shot was it, it i had to make can you imagine we went to the moon <laughs> we have a piece of equipment and the camera busted can you imagine like we made it trust us we don't have the footage what it leans toward is, it, this is true, in all of the training missions for the moon landing, NASA used fake footage. That is true. You can look, look all of this up. Fake footage was used. It was in circulation. And if you had to show it, the question is, would you really leave it to chance? Or would you just have something in your back pocket just in case something went wrong. I mean, well, we're talking, just in case. We're talking about Richard Nixon right now, by the way. For, oh. the, for those at home who aren't following along, and I don't know if you know his history with the use of electronics, but he's not been entirely ethical with those. You okay. Understand? Was he there in 69? He was, yeah, he got elected in, in 68. 68. Yeah. And yeah. he took over in J January, and then July is when the moon landing happened. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yep. so he was president at the time. Come on, tricky dick, brother. Yeah. Who knows what he was up to? But yeah, there's no question we went to the moon. Actually, one of the more fascinating things about the fact that we got to the moon is that despite modern uh, uh, advances in physics, we still use the three laws of Newtonian motion. Those are the only three laws really that got used, and those are from the 17th century. That's pretty fucked up, right? Uh huh. Pretty yeah. messed up. I, so I got a, a Hollywood question <laughs> for you. I'm a, you know, yep. I've done a bunch of movies and all that stuff. I, it, the, then how do you explain the documentary that came out last year? Um, this uh, it was a big, huge thing for IMAX, right? The one with Ryan Gosling? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Where they wouldn't that's plant. A, that's a scripted the one. one. That, they the wouldn't one was repurposed for IMAX and all the footage. The cor movie. Correct. It's yeah, called but uh, the Apollo Space Mission. The one with Ryan yep. Gosling, they wouldn't show him planting the American flag. <laughs> yeah, because they would have. They wouldn't off show China. that scene right there. It, exactly. They wouldn't. They right. would. It would have pissed off China. So I, because I watched this documentary, I thought it was unbelievable, and it, right. I don't know how you would fake that footage today. I it, so watch our show. So uh, if you watch our show, so this is what we did with uh, with we had three very very famous, uh, very famous clips from all the moon landings, mm -hmm. and we we used the same technology and said, well, how would you fake it then? Yeah, right? so yeah. How would you? That, exactly. How would you fake it? Yeah. And here's the I mean here's the answer on that. 
it's super easy. Like you like watch our, we couldn't believe it. How it like, wow, there are no stars in the sky. So you just need a black background. All you need to do is like the quote, you know, the, the, the lack of gravity. All you have to do is play it back slower, shoot it, shoot it at a higher frame rate. And uh, so it plays back, you know, 50% speed and it looks the exact same. All you have to do, like, we like lined it up and we we're like, this is making this fake footage thing <clears throat> is, is actually pretty easy. Here's, here's what I came away from doing that show with. I'm not saying, like, we went to the moon mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of the footage that we have is 100% real. What this, what this dude concluded was there was fake footage in circulation and there's a decent chance that some of the footage that we've seen isn't entirely real. And when you think about it and you just use your mind and you and use your brain and you say, if I'm not allowed to fail, it's not if, if I if I can't I can't go to the moon and fail because <laughs> the camera broke, the relay broke, right. the project something broke. Why wouldn't you have something in your back pocket? Yeah, I, and just to make sure. No, no, that I can get behind. If you have certain pieces of stock, right, um, or, totally. pre, or, or pre shot footage that you could bridge the gaps between a live telecast and everything totally. else, uh, that makes sense. Um, what, what you do bring up though at the beginning of the conversation is super interesting to me. How did how did they know how to use those cameras on the moon? Using those cameras now, because like those are, I think it was Super Eight they were shooting on, um, film wise. It, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't even Super Eight because remember it was an electronic signal. Yeah, it, so uh, I, we don't look. We barely have that now, for Christ's sakes. Right. I mean, look at our footage today. If you're watching this on our, our thing, like we're on Facetime today, and it's still hit and miss, right? Flips out. Yeah. Uh, how did they? Perf magically perfect that then Dude. like i can see them going back and forth on it <laughs> i did watch the doc though um and it was pretty compelling footage i, I don't know when they would have gone back and shot it or unless they <sighs> i mean look if you want to take it to the extreme i mean i've seen a dinosaur squash a jeep and it looked really <laughs> real I mean, I swear that T Rex was there. And I, in, I'm telling you, I get all that. Jurassic Park is real. Oh, I get all that. Just looking at this footage, I look at how expensive it would be to outfit these guys, try to find the same materials, and then have astronauts go back and re-question it. Um, it would be and tough, I, but I can see them bridging the gap with stock footage. That I'll do. What What, what is your final verdict on it? What do you think right, happened? So my. I think my, my final verdict is I think it is completely legitimate to question if fake footage is mixed in or not. I think it's totally legitimate just as just as a out of being smart. Yeah. Just from being a dude, we can't have Walter Cron <coughs> excuse me. We can't have Walter Cronkite go on the air and say, We made it to the moon, but we don't have any footage. Yeah. I look I mean that I, would I be agree a disaster. With that. I agree with that. But do you think <coughs> Any of the footage was real is the is is the main question. Yes, yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. We uh, probably ninety nine point nine percent of it is real. I'm saying, listen, if there was fake footage in circulation, yep, and if we had to hit a deadline, it just it it defies logic to not have a backup. Well, this is before internet culture where people could just go easily look things up, and news agencies right. now even use stock footage for b-roll all, all the time oh yeah all the time absolutely so it's like that's not surprising all the time. by the way one of the main conspiracy theories about that picture right there is that there's no stars in the background uh-huh like if the, if he's on the moon why aren't there stars out there oh, are, you, they wouldn't show up no it's light pollution from so right. much other stuff going on around it. it's basic fucking science like that, those are the those are the theories, the conspiracy shit that irritate me. Like flat Earth, for example. Yeah. Like it's so flat we, Earth, dude. We can we, <laughs> we, we can disprove that in twenty minutes. We just have to walk outside, and in twenty minutes, I can disprove it. Sure, sure. Just with a yeah. a, a fucking stick on the ground, literally, yeah. and we can watch the way the sun moves around it, and you can tell that it's a fucking sphere. The the flat Earth one is like just very it, like we could spend like ten seconds on it. Here's all I have to say. Yep. Shadow on the moon. Yeah, yeah. It, there you go. <laughs> there the it round, is. Like, the round there shadow. Of it's pretty Earth easy. On the and moon. and the, the other one shadow. we hear about the moon landing is is this flag flying. They were like, "There's no gravity on the moon. It doesn't fly." If you look closely in the picture, there's a metal rod at the top of the flag that is connected to the the right. the, the, the flagpole. Like that's how they kept the right. flag up. And you can see that in the photo. So yeah, they knew that totally. was going to be the case because they're astronauts. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, do you, and do you want to know? What, you want to know? What's interesting is when I say 
when I say something like, dude, you got to have a backup plan. If someone says, oh, my God, that's silly to consider that. Imagine not considering that. No, I agree Imagine, with you. I agree with you. Right? From, from a producing standpoint. Two is one, one is none. Yeah. So I, I 100% agree with that. I was just curious because a lot of people have said they believe the entire thing was fake and that Stanley Kubrick shot it and blah, blah, blah. It, it would have looked way cooler if Stanley Kubrick would have Way cooler, it. yeah. It didn't look that totally. cool. So that's I, why I, I – uh, yeah. You know, when you go back to – I did a documentary on the end of World War II on, the, on VJ Day – and this is 100% true. The picture of Iwo Jima mm-hmm. was staged. It, 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 we actually really? spoke to the uh, – yeah, you can look this up too. The actual photographer mm-hmm. saw a similar moment and said, ooh, that would be so awesome if we got that picture. And he staged it. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. The fucking flag on Iwo Jima being put up. Do yeah. That, you yeah. know the story, right? Yes. Like they did it the day before, and they're like, hey, we need to really capture that. So they just did it again. Well, no shit. Fucking, yeah, yeah videographer. <laughs> it was staged. Yeah, the whole it thing was staged. Sense. As Makes a matter sense. of fact, one of, one of the staff sergeant, uh, oh God, I can't remember. I think his name was Mike something. I can't remember his name. But he was he was one of the first guys up on top of the hill. He led the charge up the hill, uh-huh. and he helped plant, plant the flag, but he was doing something else the second day, so he's not in that fucking famous bronze statue. You're kidding. That you see, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's hilarious. And also, think of the power of the image, right? I mean, we know, I mean, especially now and today, if you see something, it's like, oh, well, you know, it, I guess that did happen. They, think about how much it, it, we're more skeptical than ever. Think about in the 60s and 70s. I mean, if you had a picture of something, I mean, it was gospel. Yeah, now you're I right. Mean, it was period. So to me, I think if people don't even consider it, and I'm not saying it did happen. I'm saying, man, that would be foolish for it not to have had a backup plan. How cool, yeah. like everybody. No, I, I agree with that. I everybody with that. always dreams about, wouldn't it be cool, this is a military thing, I don't know if normal people do this, maybe for something else, but like, wouldn't it be cool to go back to an old battle but with modern weapons, you just fuck people up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it would be cool uh, as shit to take uh, Final Cut, Premiere, and Photoshop to like the 1950s. Oof. And just... Have America thinking that there's weird shit going on. You could have Japan. fucked up every <laughs> piece of news available. Yeah, like yeah. you, like if just like infiltrate the New York Times. He was like, "Hey man, I'm getting this from a confidential source in Japan," and we all start thinking Japan uh, or Japanese people have lizard heads or some shit. Yeah, like right. it just it, like make a video. Of some dude pulling his human face off. He's like a lizard underneath while he's relaxing at home and drinking motor oil or some shit. Or if you would have put the Mars rover footage back then and said hey you know what after the moon right. we went to mars the next day and yeah. it was even incredible and you showed that footage you'd be like no way america's amazing we can never stop them yeah uh let's let's <laughs> let's stay in the outer space theme then uh All right. and and I, we got to go to ufos you know that right like we've got to talk about ufos of course and I is gotta... there is there little green men yes or no no, no here's, you're saying no that i'm saying here's what i'm going to say and i'm going to be pretty definitive on this okay i'm going to tell everybody there are no little green men flying in little tin saucers in in you know up in the sky. What did you say? Do- they were able to fucking defeat space and time, but they forgot to turn the lights off when they showed up in our exactly. atmosphere. Exactly. <laughs> like trillions of not billions, trillions yeah. of light years away. Yeah. They fly all the way here. Can you imagine that? They're like, hey, Frank, did you turn <laughs> off the lights? Ah, I totally forgot. Yeah. Like. Duh. Like they, <laughs> that it, it just it, it's too like when you when we're talking about, uh, it, you know, intelligent beings from another planet, well, like we somehow humanize them and we're like, they look awfully human. They're little humans with big heads and big eyes and their spaceships look, you know, very similar to stuff that's like Buck Rogers and oh, my God, that must be. And when everybody's like, oh, no, but I saw these these lights in the sky, you can look up. There, there was a new sighting from, I think it's like, uh, I think it was from like Texas to Florida along the Gulf Coast. Uh-huh. It's uh, like everyone's on lockdown and it's like, oh, there was a whole string of lights. It's like, yeah, there were a whole string of lights. There were planes or flares or whatever. I mean, like it, like the amount of UFO investigating that I've done, they it, when I tell you, people either set things up to make it look like uh, it's a UFO uh-huh. or or – it's just an honest mistake. I mean, it's a plane with lights and it's just weird at- atmospheric disturbances. It's weather phenomenon. It's whatever, whatever. All that I'm saying is the premise of factor faked was that with all of the B 
billions of cell phones that exist <laughs> in the world and all the footage we have, certainly someone has footage that definitively shows us that a U that UFOs are real. A UFO has to have landed somewhere. There's nothing out there that makes you say, oh yeah, there, there's a, a flying saucer. And here's why. Because there aren't. <clears throat> They're just, they're just, they're not. We've never, all, I mean, so you're saying from, there's no flying saucers from outer space whatsoever or, or some form of planet or dimension. I, it, here's what I'm saying. What I will say is I do not, I think that the narrative of little green men and saucers is silly. Now, yeah. I think the idea of aliens is totally legit. I think the idea of like aliens being here, I, I would believe that there's some kind of, portal wormhole dimension something that we can't understand and there you know the idea of the aliens are among us or we are the aliens or who knows what's happening mm -hmm. the oh my god there's something so far beyond my comprehension i can't understand it that i'd buy into and say yeah i mean maybe well, that's, there are that's the thing with uh people who say there are aliens among us right there's two, and to, to me, there's two schools of thought there. One is the little green men thing. That's ridiculous. There's no way because we would have seen that by now. Uh, the other one is that if you think about it logically, a, a civilization that would be old enough to have the technology to do something like that would be so far away from us. They would have, they would have to be so technologically advanced that they would find out new ways of bending gravity to make travel faster, right? Totally. So the idea of them being able to take on a different look or whatever the case is, or, or whatever is happening there. That's not, that, that that's that's like, oh, of course they would be able to do something like that, right? But again, that's like, that's an easy cop-out. That's like saying, yeah, it probably happened, but we, we'll never be able to prove it. That's nothing. You're saying nothing when you say that. Right. Um, but we what we do know is there are almost certainly aliens like it would be there's weird. certainly aliens. it would be weird if there wasn't we found they're just not flying these these aircrafts is that what you're saying well maybe no, maybe that's not what I'm i mean okay maybe maybe it's <laughs> something that we couldn't perceive yeah because right? i i saw the pentagon just release that footage about six or eight months ago did you see yeah, it where the the pilot in san diego you know they yeah. captured it on that uh plane and said I, I i don't know what this is and um what are your theories on that then or what that I, is <clears throat> So all of that kind of footage, I, I'm just chalking up to, I, I mean, I think that we just say, I don't know. I'm, gonna, I'm going to ascribe to the, it's not little, little green men in a flying saucer. Is it some sort of alien technology that came through, you know, some wormhole and is flying around? Maybe. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is, but I think that the, the idea <laughs> that there are no, no such thing as aliens is silly. Yeah, because that's that's stupid. To, that's there stupid. have to be, right? I mean, we've already found pretty definitive. We, we, yeah. we, we found pretty definitive evidence of life on other planets already, uh, and and on the moon as well that life has existed there at some point. One of the prevailing theories actually is that um, asteroids that originated from Mars slammed into the Earth, and that's where the first organic material came from, when it was yeah. still you know a, a reasonable planet. But if you think about like the Drake equation. Is an equation to determine in a galaxy how much, how many, in, how many habitable planets with likely life on them there would be, just in the Milky Way galaxy, which is the one we currently reside in. We're looking at other options, but for now we're here. Um, there's uh, t about ten thousand, right? There's two trillion galaxies in the known universe. So if you multiply those two numbers, that's a two with sixteen zeros behind it. That's mm -hmm. how many planets there should be in the known universe with life on it. And well, it, the further we get away from us, the older that life is, the more advanced, the more evolved, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, I mean, this is th that, that part of the conversation to me is ridiculous, that there might not I, be aliens. Right. I, it, and to me, the answer is very clearly, if it is greater than one, then it's infinite. Yeah. The answer is not, oh, there are four planets that have life. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's if there's infinite. more than one, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so what if it's more so, than one, it goes on forever. What about alien abduction then? So alien abduction. Hey, can I stop you right quick before that? Because I read something super funny about, and it, this, this technically doesn't have anything to do with alien abduction. Great. But uh, <laughs> someone happened to ask Mr. Uh, Mr. Joe Exotic who he would want to play him in a movie or film uh -huh. or movie or television yep. series. 
And his response was, I don't know why it's made me think of aliens, but uh, his response was Brad Pitt. Yep. And the second one was not not David Spade. He said Joe Dirt. Yeah, yeah, Joe Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> and that made me think of a guy who I could, I bet I could trick Joe Exotic into thinking he had been abducted. Probably. If, I, I, if you just hang out with him enough and talk about, like, dude, I think, like, if he just blacked out drinking one night, you're like, dude, I think you were abducted. Because you, you, I put you over here, you were sleeping, I came back, you were in completely different clothes on the other side of the room. What the fuck happened? You probably got abducted. He, yeah. That fucking dumb fuck would believe that. And I look, I, I can actually believe that Brad Pitt would play him. I, I really do. If you give him that mullet, you know, because in real life, they're about the same age. Um, I think you could ugly up Brad Pitt, and that could be his Charlize Theron monster movie, you know, where he's gotten that ugly. I bet you he could Oscar that shit. I don't know. Um, Kate, look, they're, they're, they're yeah, going gonna to do it. Kathy Bates is a shoe in to play Carol Baskin. Oh, yeah. No, they've already. So Kate McKinnon already bought the rights from SNL. She's playing Carol Baskin. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, and she bought it off the yeah, podcast, yeah. so it's going to be a limited series. Look for that as soon as whatever this <laughs> pandemic is over. Uh, that, before we get to go back to the alien abduction, that'll give us a point to yeah. go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, finest mattresses on the planet. If you are abducted by an alien before we get to it, you might as well be sleeping in a ghost bed because uh, you're going to get raped, prodded, killed, uh, or flown to another planet. And you might as well have the, the, the greatest night's sleep of your life before you get taken from this earth. Everything is 25% off. Mattresses, pillows, sheets, covers. The adjustable bases are 50% off. And as always, they have a 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest at GhostBed.com. Knocks it down to about 20 bucks if you're getting your, your surplus or stimulus checks in the mail. Uh, or it's direct definitely deposited. not surplus. Eh, stimulus. Uh, deposited into your account. That knocks it down about 20 bucks a month. Sleep in comfort at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, where everything is 25% off. Alien abductions, is that a real thing? Man, you know, there are some really compelling books. Um, there are re- there's a whole community. There's like, you know, the the psychologists around the world who have taken testimony from people and the similarities and the stories and, <laughs> you know, all of that. The what, Here's what I would where, – where I sort of land on it. I think there is some sort of crazy phenomenon. I've just I, – I definitely do not think it's little green men in a spaceship coming down, walking into a room. Maybe there is some interdimensional thing. Maybe there is some I, – I, I don't know what it is. But the commonality between the stories, they, they, they lean, they tip me toward, you know what? It's probably some common thing that happens within humans. It's a bad dream that we all feel is real. It's kind of like we all have that dream of flying or falling. And, <laughs> you know, maybe some people just have this sort of dream or experience. With all that being said, there's a lot of really good documentaries um, and cases where people have implants, they've got metal, they've got microchips, they have whatever. And I, it, the, the answer that I come down on that is it's definitely not what they think it is. It's definitely not, oh, it's a space, it's a, you know, little green man from a tin can walking in a room. But I wouldn't wholeheartedly discount the fact that some kind of bizarre phenomenon is happening. I don't even know if it, I don't even know if it necessarily has to be paranormal. It could just be something that happens to, you know, one in 10 billion, you know, or one in 10 million people or something. Yeah, right now half your face is cut off, so maybe, you know. Oh, there you there go. It is, there it is. Maybe the aliens. I'm not saying the aliens have had your camera, but. Uh, yeah, they had that. What's your thoughts, Dan? Um, I think if. Uh, I, I think if there are aliens advanced enough to be here right now, and there, like there certainly are, there have to be. Just st- statistically speaking, we think. We think the part of the, what we call the known universe is about 13.8 billion years old, which means it's 13.8 billion light years from us to mm-hmm. from any point to the outer rim, whatever you want to call it. Um, we also now think because of the way we see the grid, if you want to call it that, of space time as flat, that means it's kind of like standing on Earth, right? And you know that it's round, but it looks flat because it's so large under you. We think that we think the universe is way larger than we ever believed it to be, um, which means we're not looking at a two like j- just for habitable planets. It's a two with 16 zeros behind it. Mm-hmm. But we're, we're probably talking about and for all intents and purposes, it's an infinite amount. Um, 
So with an infinite amount of time, yeah, anything can happen, right? Like it, w once infinity is on the table, then you can't really do math like that anymore. Yeah. It's the same just, reason. Yeah. Go ahead. Just ask Thanos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, so then that'll lead me to this, John. Uh, sim world. Is that a possibility? That we're all living in a simulated world? You know, it, I have really good friends who absolutely believe this. Um, you know, and if you read about the singularity... Um, you know, if you're Kurt Wilde's book, the singularity mm -hmm. is near. I, I had it, a guy, I had a guy in Ross Patterson revolution who wrote the book, the simulation hypothesis. His name is a uh, Rizwan Verk. He's a doctor at, uh, MIT. And, um, look, he said 80% that it's a sim world after all of his studies. Yeah. It, and it, here's where, here's where I could just tell you, I come down on this is does it ultimately matter? This is one of those questions of does it matter? Because, and this is, this is why. In the theory of the sim world, they're saying, oh, it's all a simulation and what you think is real is not real. It's just a simulation. But if it is just a simulation and I think it's real and I can't prove that it's not real, then it's real. So it's like very, you know, to me, it's like very, you know, hippie, it's kind of like a hippie dude, you know, we're on the fingertip of a giant in the universe. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, you, you can't, it, like the, the problem that I have with these kind of theories is that if you're going to put forward a theory that you're saying we're in a simulation, then I'm going to put forward the theory we're actually all underwater and it's all, everything that you see is a reflection of the stuff that's up above us that you'll never be able to see. And yeah, that's like, uh, that's uh, Bertrand Russell's flying tea kettle yeah. Yeah. argument. Yes. Basically, yeah. he said, uh, like, people were like, you can't prove there's no God. He goes, well, you can't prove there's not a tea kettle orbiting the moon right now. That, yeah. doesn't, that, that doesn't make it true, necessarily. Yeah. It's, exactly. It's that, and, and the whole idea of it's a simulation, We, I mean, it's not like we're going to cut down a tree one day and, you know, a bunch of matrixy numbers are going to fly out of it. Right. Where you like, oh, wow, it is a simulation. The only like, reason it would matter is if we could escape the simulation is what you're saying. It, 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 the, only, the only reason it would matter is if we could get out of it. Right. Yes. If you yeah. can't get out of it, then it doesn't matter. And we can, to me, this is, this is one of those arguments of, I mean, we could frame this question a million different ways and <laughs> never get anywhere. And it's not a, it, you know, that it, it is an example. I can't say, no, it's not a simulation because... I don't even know what they're talking about in terms of what it means to be a simulation. Right. So yeah, well, like, I feel uh, like it's silly. And the, and the doctor who was on my show said the same thing of like, look, you can't do anything about it anyways. Therefore, you might as well just enjoy life and go through whatever well, that's it not, is. That's not entirely true, though. Like if you know you're inside of what's effectively a computer program, we understand how computer programs work. Mm -hmm. So we should be mm -hmm. able to figure out more about the structure of life and not just the structure, but how to influence it. Right. If we knew that it was that, that's that's my brain. I, like if you I, knew, I, like think yeah. about think about Tron, right? Yeah. Or think about the Matrix. I know these are fucking movies. I got it. But they're in his both are in his book, by the way. Yeah. yeah. But right. but that's like right. think about the Matrix. One of the first things that Morpheus says to Neo is, "You think that's air you're breathing?" He goes, "Do you think your ability to run, jump, whatever has anything to do with your muscles in this place?" No, it doesn't. So you should like if this is truly a simulation. Someone would have figured out how to break the rules of it at some point, you would think, right? Because that happens in the most sophisticated computers on Earth. Something goes wrong frequently, yeah, and you have to well, deal with that. Speaking of Morpheus, I, I'm going to throw out I'm going to throw out a theory that I don't know if you guys have gone down this <laughs> rabbit hole, but I this is a rabbit hole that I I will go down and say I'm not saying this is the way that things do work, but I'm saying I wouldn't be surprised if it is. And that is the theory of morphic resonance. And it's been popularized by a guy named Rupert Sheldrake. And it states that each species, that in the DNA from each species is its own receiver. The DNA itself is a receiver and the species can communicate intangibly because thoughts exist outside of the physical form. And the proof for all of this in the experiments are the, for example, ants. 
and let and let's use it let's use this example of the he or uses bees. the example of, or bees yeah, right like way, yeah. you take an anthill and if you had the south you know two anthills and you took the ants from the north side of one anthill and swapped them with the ants on the south side of one anthill they you can swap them and they will build they will completely reverse direction and mm. build the right way yep. and the question is how they're clearly communicating through something and if you take something like the four minute mile something that was you know previously thought of to be impossible to do we surrounded uh, sir roger bannister broke it 1954 yep. then then 46 days later it was broken again then yep. it was broken 300 times in 10 years that's once every 12 days it when something becomes in the collective conscience it's outside of you and then it then that kind of taps into the whole when we have a thought or a breakthrough happens there's just something that we all get on the same page about or understand this and this pandemic is a good example like the world is scared yeah. so there's something about it where maybe when we when we talk about where do songs come from where do thoughts come from just like in Rupert's example that he used, it, it, or, or Dr. Sheldrake's, what he does is he says a television, if you're watching a television and you see an image, where does that image come from? Inside the television or outside the television? And he said, so when you have a thought, is it actually coming from inside your head or is it outside your head and you're receiving it? It's a really interesting thought exercise to say, Maybe that's how we're all so connected and how you have all these weird coincidences and, you know, you think of a friend and then they call you or, you know, these, this global consciousness, it might be morphic resonance. I think it's an interesting theory. I do too. I think it's uh, also heavily tied in with quantum entanglement. I mean, yeah, like th this is just basic science, but uh, for example, there is no atom in your body right now that was there five years ago. You understand that? Mm -hmm. Like your teeth, your brain, your eyes, everything is different now. Like there's 0% yep. of you now that was you five years ago, structurally speaking. Structurally, yes. Yeah. And what we know about quantum entanglement, it's a principle essentially when two atoms touch, they can then communicate instantaneously across any amount of distance. So information is energy, and it takes the same time to travel as light. Huh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Speed of light. But you can but move. also... Yeah, remember, though, two atoms can't touch. Well, yeah, yeah, they but come into contact is the phrase they use, but that's right. not really accurate either. We, you found that out with the baseball bat hitting a baseball, yeah. right? That's a very exactly. good episode of yeah. ESPN Sports Science, by the way. The only two yeah. atoms that I've seen touch are in West Hollywood. Um, it was a Friday afternoon, <laughs> and look, day drinking happens, and I saw two atoms <laughs> exactly. touch. Um, yes, you they did. were docking. Anyways, <laughs> the, the, point, the point of that is just based on those two very simple scientific principles – Anybody you've ever come into contact with, if you think about it like a virus, like the, the thing that scares people about COVID is that the flu is a one-to-one. -one. Like the ratio typically is if you get the flu, you're probably going to pass it on to one other person. Mm -hmm. With COVID, you're probably going to pass it on to three additional people, right? Well, think, think about it that way as a viral spread. Like for thousands of years, we've all been coming into contact with one another, sharing atoms, as weird as that sounds. If... Any amount of those end up in our brains, then there's no reason we wouldn't be able to communicate that way, right? right. Like, to to yeah. me, that makes sense. And I think uh, uh, the people call the the morph morphic resonance. Morphic resonance. Yep. They they call that like paranormal. I don't think it's paranormal. No. Like it's just science. Like it, th that should be possible. We should be able to communicate without talking because we see other creatures doing it all the time. More more we see what I call genetic memory. Like the reason human babies are fucking worthless because our skulls are too large to get out of our mother's, mother's vaginas. Right. So we have to come out half retarded. Yeah, it's first. like a cone. Yeah. 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 Um, and we spend like that time we should be spending in the womb, basically. Like the first year of your life. You should still be in there. At any rate, a cat or a dog comes out ready to fuck shit up. Especially a cat. Like a cat knows how to hunt already. Knows how to fight. Yep. So where where did it learn that? Where did a wolf learn that it's a wolf? Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. I, yeah, and, and to to go back to your your Roger Barrister points, um, or Bannister, Bannister, uh, Bannister yeah. um, with the four minute mile, uh, with that, you know, I, I remember reading the book. There was a movie that just came out about it uh, that I, that I saw. It was more or less fear because out in the world, it was just it, a human cannot run 
and under a four minute mile or, or, or your heart would explode. That was the, right. the kind of thought process back then going on at the time. <clears throat> Once it was accomplished, don't you think that it just entered everybody else's mind that, hey, man, all right, you're not going to die if you try to attempt to do this. You're going to be fine, and it, and it is possible. And then, therefore, that's why it was able to be broken because people lost their fear and decided to go for it anyways. Um, I, I just saw this happen with the marathon. Uh, remember that guy who just ran under the, what was it, two hours? Yeah. Uh, and the shoes yeah. and your heart was supposed to explode or whatever. I think you're, you're going to start to see that more and more because it's a mental thing. And once people see someone else doing it, then they think that they can do it. Um, yeah, it, it totally. I mean, I think like the idea, I, I think that that idea, but, but leaning into that is there's a collect, I, I, I think it's very clear that there's a collective conscience of some kind, right? Like we as a species are all on the same page about things all the time. And when bad stuff happens, like, you know, like this uh, pandemic or 9-11 or something, you, you just feel different. And that's not just an individual emotion. It just seems like it's sort of like the collective experience of some kind. And it, and when, you know, look, I am a religious, I am definitely a religious person. I, I was born and raised Catholic, married in the Vatican, totally get it. But there is no one correct religion. And there are so many, so many examples of collective thought somehow manifesting something to happen. And whatever we want to call that, whether it's a miracle or, you know, somehow manifest, you know, manifesting something, it's almost like it, like when you're at a sporting event and you could feel momentum. Momentum in sports is there is no real law on momentum. But when you look at something like, you know, Jeremy Lin scoring 20 <laughs> points in eight straight games and people going crazy, like there's this there's like this energy that happens that allows things to occur whether or not we call it prayer or collective conscience, I do think that there is something to it. Lynn Sanity. Do you think that Lynn, uh, yeah. guys who are better at capturing those moments maybe have some like deeper causal connection to whatever we're referring to here? Like we, we in Jordan, we called it will. Like he had the will to win. Yeah. No, like no, like no one we've ever seen. We've never seen anybody, in my opinion, like Pete Rose or Michael Jordan. Like they wanted yeah. to win. They didn't give a fuck if they had to murder somebody to get it done. They're going to win. And Isn't it? Yeah. Go ahead. I, I think the I think that what's interesting is, you know, often in the uh, that's too good to be true. It often is, right? Like uh, like if we do a study, uh, we did a study for example on you know who's the most clutch shooter of all time, and right. you know you go down all the greats and like people are like oh well, Jordan has to be the most. It clutch wasn't shooter. Jordan. And it's not Jordan. Do you no. want to know who when we did the study? It was uh, Paul Pierce. Oh, I was going to yeah. say Steve uh, Kerr, maybe, but Steve yeah. Kerr. It was it was Paul Pierce followed by Big Shot Bob. Oh yeah, like, Robert Ory. Robert Ory. Well, he's got people seven forget. rings for a reason, yeah, brother. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I still remember it. that three from the corner from the baseline. Absolutely. I remember. I remember the three from the top of the key in the Lakers. Yeah, that one too. Lakers. Yeah. Like yeah. Th that guy. Yeah, it was was insane. Um, there, it, it's true. You're is, right. There's something to it being too good to be true where you're like, oh, my God, that right thing happened at the right time, at the right moment, in the right place. But that is what what's so amazing about sport is, you know, you have this group of people who are all rooting for something to happen. And then it does happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, the skeptic will say, ah, it's a coincidence. Just because people wanted it to happen doesn't mean that it helped it to happen. But then somebody like myself will say, there's something to energy that we just see in every field over and over and over. That positive energy begets mm. positive energy. Well, negative energy begets negative energy. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I, I don't know. I still don't know what it is. But if you look throughout it, if you look throughout history, like we have this, there, there's this trope in fucking Hollywood that the good guy always wins, right? Yeah. But for the most part, at least at the national level, the global level, the good guys won way more often than not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we've, we've been able to curtail people like Kim Jong-il and now Kim Il sun and et cetera. And that'll, that'll continue. Right. Yeah. Uh, yep. Russia lost. Yeah. Like, and maybe that's a Western point of view because Russia is like, I'm not in Russia. I'm in the U S and we won. Right. But I don't think so. I think Russia was genuinely evil back then. Um, yeah. Yeah, to me, uh, I get disappointed when I feel like there is energy or momentum happening for one thing, and at the very end, it just gets ripped away, and and you don't complete. Well, it shows you how fragile what that energy it all is. is. Yeah, I mean, for example, like just because you're a big sports guy, and so were we. 
Um, I remember when uh, Butler played Duke in the, yep. in the national championship, and that kid still had a shot, and he shot that three ball that went off the glass, and like it could have banked in, and it could have been the greatest story of all time. And holy shit, man, I was disappointed when it, di- it didn't drop at the end. And I was like, <laughs> why? I want the answer to why that didn't happen. Like Tiger Woods and the Masters. We all wanted Tiger to come back and win two years ago, and he did. But he shouldn't have. And things like that where you're like, oh, man, god damn it, uh, that are always unexplainable. And I think that's why sports is the, the, the never-ending thing that connects us all, where it's like, man, there is some times where the energy and the momentum is there and it'll happen. And there's other times where it just won't. You're going to be angry for the rest of your life. It's so funny when you look at streaks and, you know, we did the science of the rally and the science of the slump. (laughs) And when you look statistically, you know, people will say, look, on any given outcome, usually it's binary. You know, it's either good or bad. It's a coin toss. And, you know, theoretically, it's a 50-50 chance on something. So how do you get 27 wins in a row? How do you get, you know, 10 base hits in a row or whatever, whatever you're saying? 56. Yeah. 50. Right, like 56 get, DiMaggio, yeah. Exactly. How do you, how does something like that happen? You, I say, dude, like this whole idea about being in the zone, seeing things clear, positive energy, begetting positive energy. We all have experienced where things are easier. Like it's just, mm-hmm. well, if you're playing, ba- if anybody's mm-hmm. ever played baseball and when you're in a groove, you just can't miss. Like yeah. the ball looks yeah. like a beach ball. Yeah. And why is that? It, to me, it's the, we have allowed our we've we've disconnected ourselves from thought and allowed ourselves to be in the moment. Yeah, it's a shower and principle, essentially. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. And when so you do that, what we could do, we could all learn from Rube from Major League Two. We should be reading yep. Victoria's Secrets catalogs and be dumb as fuck all the time, because that's yeah. how he cleared his mind. Yeah, I look. Yeah. I don't. I don't believe in Major League uh, Two. I don't believe that that happened. That's one of my biggest conspiracies. Anyone who brings that movie up <laughs> needs to die. There should have only been just the one. No need for, for part two. Well, there shouldn't be three. That's <laughs> no. Every, everybody. That was Scott exactly. Bakula. Exactly. Charlie, Charlie Sheen's trying to make a new one, by the way. He's been shopping that yeah. script forever. Uh, let's, let's move on to something completely ridiculous. Um, yes. Because I, I got to know your thoughts on this one. If you believe in this one, I, I don't know what to do with myself. And I might, just, I might just walk out of the room. Uh, Bigfoot. Okay. Is Bigfoot on your list that you believe in? Here, here's all I have to say. And, and, uh, big, that was Bigfoot, a big sigh. That was a big oh sigh man. you took. <laughs> let's just let's just use let's use a tiny bit of logic, just a tiny bit. How could Bigfoot possibly exist? Like, how <laughs> in the world? And when you say because do you know how many TV shows and documentaries and books? I mean, wait, 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 hold on a second. You're talking about the big business of Bigfoot. What you mean? Someone's making money off of it. Therefore, it's got to be real. Like, are you kidding me? Like the idea that there's Bigfoot roaming around and oh my god! Like, like, look, the the Patterson footage, which is the famous footage of Bigfoot. My grandfather. Do you know, yeah. Do you yeah. want to know what he actually said right before he shot that footage? He said, "I'm going to go out and shoot footage of Bigfoot." <laughs> this is that is true. And oh my god. He actually got it. Yeah. Like, what are the odds? <laughs> it's incredible. So you're like, when I say use your brain, you're like, look, when they're like, when people are like, oh no, there's a, a yeti and there's a bigfoot and there's a blah blah blah. I'm what like, about Guys, like, there's a big yeah. business? <laughs> yeah. It's a big business and it's all a farce. And we, and all that it would take is one bigfoot to get hit by a truck in Montana. Yep. And we'd be like, whoa, there it is. But it, it's just the, the idea that somehow there's this giant species and they're yeah. way smarter than we are. and They're avoiding us. It, there's no chance. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I mean, in Montana, I, like let's it's a Pacific Northwest animal. So you're, you're my, yeah. you would definitely wouldn't be in Montana. But no, he's probably okay. he's probably retired <laughs> down to Boca by now. You would think, right? Dude, One would have it, to think. It, is he Jewish? It's not just Pacific Northwest. There's like in every state. When we did a uh, uh, fact or fake, there's in every state they have their monster. Yeah, they've yeah. got their bigfoot. They yeah, call it something super different. Because why? Shit. It's tourism. Yeah, exactly. It's tourism and it's money. God. Exactly. I wonder if if uh, bigfoot's uh, in a cave now because of COVID nineteen. I wonder if he's, if he's uh, actually Chewbacca, 
Could be. Like that yeah. actor just got lost in costume and he's been out there all these years and people are like, oh, who is this asshole? Yeah. You know and, what I mean? and with that Patterson footage, by the way, my grandfather shot that. Um, he uh, it was definitely some form of man in a suit. And it was a yeah, shitty 100%. suit nonetheless. Like none of that looked remotely real to me where I was like, come on, man. Uh, I won't get behind that. And then I'll follow this up with the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah. Obviously, I mean, couldn't couldn't be true even if we wanted it to be. Even if we really wanted it to right? be. Right? Yeah. Couldn't possibly be true. No. They, like, it's it's so so far away from it. And that's where people fall into these, oh, my God, there are all of these mystical creatures all over the planet. Like, no, there aren't. Yeah. Like, there's a big business about them, but they're, they don't. <laughs> They don't exist. The, cre- the, the creatures that exist are fucked up enough. We don't have to go make new ones. Although I exactly. will say, yeah. what's more likely, like if you if you didn't know anything about any of this, what would you more likely expect? Like uh, something that looked like a deer but had a 30-foot fucking neck, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, or a horse with a horn? I, look, b- both are plausible to me where it was born with some form of defect. But it, like if we're if we're going to like let's say the Loch Ness monster, okay? I don't yep. uh, something like this where, where occasionally there's a, where has there's been a brachiosaurus a, living in a fucking body of water. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. But occasionally there is you know water life that is dug up where it's some unexplained fish or you know a, a whale that that no, nobody's ever seen before, something like that. Like that would be fine. But a, di- a full on dinosaur living underneath the lake that pops its head up in Scotland is. Uh, that's, that's too Look, much dinosaurs for me, and I still can't exist, get behind man. that. Dinosaurs definitely still exist. Yeah, with like alligators and things like that. Uh, and crocodiles. I mean, crocodiles, every yeah. fucking bird that you've ever seen is an avian yeah, fucking correct. dinosaur. Correct. I just don't think a Loch Ness would be able to survive today's world. No, I mean, look. That they, type of dinosaur. Like, I don't know how they're making money to pay for rent and their cell phone and all this bullshit. And how Stimulus. Are, $1,200. Uh, Loch Ness Yeah, but I don't, know what they're, I don't know what they're doing in the U.K., though. Eh, who knows? Know. Who knows? Uh, we'll get to the last sponsor here, and then we'll get to some ones that, that, that were probably true. Um, yeah. Last sponsor is BoxOfAwesome.com. Look, you go to this, you, you go to the sites, you, you pop in a, a four, five little questions. They tell you what kind of man you are in this life, or whoa, man. They just added it for girls, too. And then they send you some cool shit in the mail. Um, it's just a box of magic every single month. It's kind of like Christmas. I've gotten a hatchet. I've gotten a dop kit. Uh, the whiskey you've gotten a whiskey to cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a travel bag. All this shit's like two hundred bucks, and it's uh, forty. With you know the what promo they code sh- Drinking Bros. You get twenty percent off at boxofawesome dot com. If your wife is getting birch box bullshit sent to her, you can certainly get this. Yeah, and it's my favorite day of the month when this comes. Yeah. This is my new girls gone wild for me. Yeah, it's uh, well. I used to get the VCR tapes. The girls gone wild. I, I feel monthly. like they should be putting monthly. together end of the world kits to send out to people. Uh, they're in there, dude. That would be There's super survival funny. kits in there. There's uh, Kill Cliff has its own. We've got recover, endure, ignite, yep. and CBD. Yeah. yeah. What else do you need? Yeah, that's all you need <laughs> well, in this life. Guns and ammo <laughs> and shit. But. Yeah, but yeah. what's what's yeah. first? What's first? Exactly. You know, CBD exactly. products and. Uh, I think it would be fun to do to have it. like a fo- like a quiz and it determines what your fucking survival gear is. Oh, I like that. You know what I mean? I like that a lot I like because uh, look. There's certain people like I, I'm not going to give you a bunch of stuff to hunt and kill animals because you've never done that before. Right. I would like you would be a gatherer. You wouldn't be a hunter. I, I'd kill deer. I've killed deer. Yeah, but like that's not I blasted some ducks. Out but of you don't sky. know how to like skin one and prepare it for food and all that shit, right? No, I, I'm able to take out all the insides and all mm-hmm. that other shit, right? But uh, you're right as far as like the the meat process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I would you, you're a gatherer. Yeah. Right. Gather berries and wood. To burn. Well, I mean, I, I kill the animals too. So no. you know what I'm saying, Dan. If you can't, if you can't prepare the animal, then you're not allowed to kill. Here's it. the thing, John. John doesn't know me in real life. I'm both. Um, I'm every man you you probably want to be at no. home that you're thinking about right now. So <laughs> I, I know that I'm both. I'm, bo- I'm both a hunter and a gatherer. I hunt it and then I gather it up and, and give it. I'm a provider and I give it what, out to the rest of the world. Here's, your survival kit would include like a reusable diaper, probably. Nope. A uh, toothpick is all I need to kill a man or a wolf, and I'll have you know that now. Well, I don't know why you would need to kill wolves necessarily. Just in case I get hungry. The pandemic is coming to your door real fast if you watch the news. <laughs> be, be afraid. You're going to have to kill wolves on your own. And wolves right. are the only animals that can survive the virus. I'm thinking uh, like a reusable diaper and some kind of talcum powder of some sort. That would be your survival. Kit. I need to powder up my own nuts, though. That has nothing to do with them. 
want to put yeah. that clear. Big fan of uh, Gold Bond. They're not a sponsor, and they should be. And I yeah. go the green bottle, not the yellow one. Uh, go to boxofawesome.com. Promo code DRINKINGBROS, 20% off. Let's get to some ones that might be true here. Bush Hinckley, yeah. this connection. Man, I'll tell you what. I uh, First of all, I think I honestly do think that um, Bush Sr. was a really smart president. I think that his his courage to not go into Iraq was unbelievable. That that everybody was like, you're on the doorstep. You got to go in. And the fact that he's like, we don't know how to fight that kind of war took a lot of courage. I think he's amazing. With all that being said, <laughs> man, man, is it odd that you have the brother of the, you know, you have Hinckley's brother mm -hmm. having dinner with Bush's brother the night before Reagan gets shot by John Hinckley. It's a, I mean, that's just the kind of coincidence that you're like, man, is that weird. And that's that. Those are the sort of things you say, what are the odds? And I'm not saying by any means, I'm not saying that the Bushes had something to do with it, that it's something to do with the, the Reagan assassinate or a, a attempted assassination. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, man, you got some splaining to do if that happens. Yeah. What, what was bizarre. the answer? What was the answer for that specifically that dinner? What? It, I mean, it, it, when when you like look it up, when you read it, mm -hmm. it just gone. It's gone from in all the sort of threads. It's gone from oh, they were friendly for years, and it wasn't uncommon, and it just was a a, a, a thing that happened. To oh, it never happened. Like oh, it's a myth that it didn't happen. And then you look in between, and where I got a lot, of, where you can get a lot of really good information when you have like books. There are these things called books. That had like pages, words. Sure. I don't. Know, I don't know if you guys know what they are. No. Ah, um, best. I'm they, a New York Times bestselling author. Sounds whatever, like a yeah. bunch of liberal yeah. bullshit exactly. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> like you ain't gonna learn nothing from the books. But when you like look back and you see sort of like the records of things that have occurred, it doesn't mean that they're true. It means, man, that is a really strange coincidence. And and if it did happen, it it certainly is a piece to put in place to say, gosh, you know, could that possibly just be a coincidence? Maybe. But it certainly does seem weird. Do you think it happened? Um, I, I, I'm going to err on the side. This is what I'm going to err on the side of. No. Really? <laughs> I'm going to say I'm going to say it didn't happen. Okay. And the reason why I'm going to say it didn't happen is because if it did happen, I think people would be jumping up and down um, a lot louder, and would have been during the presidential election. You know, when you have people pulling out everything they possibly can from you know, DUIs to, you know, drug abuse to whatever. Yeah. You know, it, uh, you would think that people would be jumping up and down about it. So I think it probably did not happen. Okay. If if it did, there's something super strange. Well, about. let me see if I can change your mind. Yeah. Go on. Dan and Evan, you guys have a... a it's you're not big change into Bush Senior. It's, you're big into Bush Senior. It's right? Evan. So Bush... Evan is convinced that... Uh, George H.W. Bush, Herbert Walker, was a knock, yep. a non-official cover, like, uh, case officer for the agency. Because it's so weird that a guy who had not worked in, in, gover in government intelligence in any way would just end up the CIA director, the deputy director, right. then the director, then the vice president, then the president. That's a weird track for somebody, right? Um, right. So after the Bay of Pigs, uh, it's well known that the CIA was very unhappy with John F. Kennedy. And not only that, but they were they were unhappy that he was kind of katowing to the communists for a while and all this other bullshit, and uh, and then Kennedy gets killed, right? We know that there's all these CIA connections to everybody, even peripherally, that was involved in the JFK assassination. Everybody involved in that had some kind of connection to the CIA, some way or another. Mm -hmm. And then we find out that H. W. Bush was in Dallas that morning, but he, when asked about it, was, was said, "I don't remember where I was when it happened." Right, 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 right. He's That's the only a, American. Yeah, yeah. He's the only American that. That's, American. Yeah. Wait. When what happened? That is, ring a bell. That is a lie. <laughs> to me, it would. I, I would. I would easily accept the idea that George H. W. Bush had something. Because look, uh, Oswald was a mentally disturbed person that somebody used to take a shot at the president. That is there. I mean, to me, there's no question about that. Mm -hmm. That guy was crazy as fuck. And somebody used his crazy to try to assassinate the president. How is this different? 
Well, like if so Bush is if Bush is involved in the first one, right? Then how could he not be involved in the second one? You know what I mean? That's yeah. that's like that's like if you show up to bust a bunch of people and yep. only one of them's got a record, you're like you're coming with me. Yeah, and, I mean? and and so to me, because I'm gonna I'm gonna lean with Dan on this one, and here's why. Go on, and I'm gonna prove you otherwise. I I, no, I get you, but Go on. if you're just looking at it from you know just a quick surface check of it, Reagan was an actor, kind of like a Trump. One right. would say right now, right? Mm -hmm. It happened in 81, right into the, you know, the, the first year of his first term or whatever. If you were going to take him out because you were worried about the country and all that other shit, would they have missed Reagan that much versus someone else in there? Uh, to me, yeah. Look, Bush was the vice president at that time. Um, he would have been he would have become president had Reagan been assassinated. Yeah, but would would, 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 would Reagan have become the president he was had Hinckley not taken a shot at him? That's the question for me. Like Yes, what, but 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 what clearly, would the, what would the Cold War would have looked like? Would rollback have worked the way it was supposed to? Would the economy have worked with the Iran Contra shit, which, you know, that was a scandal, but it did what we were trying to do. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of good stuff happened under Reagan, except for the six years where he raised taxes, by the way. Right. <laughs> to, all, to all you conservative fucking fanboys out there. But anyways, um, like, would Reagan have been the same president? Would all those things have gotten done if he had not been emboldened and empowered by Because he had just come. We, remember, Jimmy Carter had just left office. Right. And right. I could have beat him. You could have beat him. He was the one of the worst presidents in modern hu in American history. And I wouldn't say that even Reagan came in with a huge mandate to do anything. But once he fucking survived getting shot on live television... And then the next, the next State of the Union, a, a balloon pops, and he goes, missed me, and just keeps on with his State of the Union. Right. Like, he was lionized as a figure after that. That was it. Like, he would call fucking uh, Tip O'Neill and be like, hey, we're getting, and Tip O'Neill's a Democratic senator. He'd be like, we're getting this done, the end. And right. And get done. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I, I wouldn't say that it would be. I H. agree, I agree with everything you're saying. But, I don't, but I don't, he, but I don't he missed, and he st instead of actually yeah, going through with That's what I'm him. saying. So if, I, I think George H.W. Bush, if he was trying to make this happen, he would say, like, don't kill him, just shoot him. Because mm. George H.W. Bush could not have become president right then. I would have said, so here's where I, I, I'm going to render a verdict on this. Okay. On my, on my side. I'm not saying you guys are wrong, but I'm saying here, here's where I would differ. The, um, first of all, the Bush family and the history of the Bush family, man, we could get, I mean, we could spend hours, right? Oh, when yeah. you go back to Prescott Bush mm -hmm. and you're like, his signature is on the alien document, blah, blah, yeah. blah, which I don't think, you know, you, you like go back to all that kind of stuff. You're like, Oh my God, there's the, and, and you know, Bush never being elected to anything until he became president really. Right. Was mm -hmm. bizarre. Right. It's, it's kind of strange that the way that um, it sort of goes on, but <laughs> here's what I would say. I don't think, the reason why I don't think the dinner took place is because like you have two scenarios. One, hey, let's shoot him and shoot him dead and make sure he's dead. And if that were the case, this was, that was the worst plan ever. And what an idiot to have dinner with the guy, with the brother of the guy. Like you, you didn't cover your tracks very well. So I, I can't imagine that the bushes are that stupid to try to kill somebody and to be having dinner. So that doesn't that doesn't make any sense. And then if you say the hey shoot him but don't kill him, I mean how do you guarantee somebody is not going to die, especially an old dude? Yes, yeah. like yeah. you know yeah. he'd hemorrhage out. So to me it, it defies logic that they would have anything to do with it. Um, and that's why I think the dinner didn't happen. That's my ultimate conclusion. Okay, I'm fine with that. Okay, uh, and then we'll close this out here with uh, Dan's favorite subject, uh, quantum physics. This is Dan. You spend hour a lot. If you listen to the show on a, on a regular basis, I'm trying to yeah. figure out how to word this correctly. Dan will get high and spend hours and hours and hours of mm -hmm. his day researching quantum physics mm -hmm. just because you enjoy it. Right. Therefore, I wanted to save this for <laughs> last for you. What is your conspiracy theory? I don't have one. This is his, so I want to hear what he has to say. Oh, about yeah, oh so, this, so this this came from him. Yes. Okay. Great. What is your conspiracy theory on quantum physics then? So I don't think it's a conspiracy theory. There, it's in, in it's a conundrum. We are we're stuck between Newtonian physics and quantum physics with no bridge. Mm -hmm. So we have two different <clears throat> laws: one that applies to obviously objects that we can see and touch and you know measure, and one that applies to things that we can't measure. And 
it seems very, very, very strange that both sets of laws seem to work in their respective environments, but there's nothing bridging the gap between them. And so the question then becomes, which one is more true or is there no such thing as one universal law and there are a bunch of laws, which then if that's true, that there, there's not like laws are dependent upon environments and they change and they're different. Um, you know, th that Newtonian physics is different than quantum physics and there is no unifying theory of it. Then I would, I, then I would contest that, look, all of the invisible stuff, the stuff we don't see, the stuff we don't know, the idea about the projection of thought or where thought originates falls more into, you know, there's this quantum level there. There's probably this other dimension and in, in infinite other, you know, infinitely more dimensions where the laws are all wacky and they don't apply to either one of those. And it's beyond our comprehension. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's super interesting. Um, so I, I think maybe this is we're we're down a fucking rabbit hole now. But who cares? I think uh, thought might be a projection of the fourth spatial dimension. That's that seems likely to me. Like it, so we see three spatial dimensions, right? We see yep. back, front, up, down, left, right. We see all those. Mm -hmm. um, there's a fourth. There, according to M theory or string theory, there are ten total spatial dimensions. And then there's space time, which is would be the eleventh. Right now we call it the fourth dimension, but let's say the fourth spatial dimension, it'll be something that we can't conceive of, right? Okay, imagine being a dot on a piece of paper that's flat, and you only know that, right? So let's say you have eyes, you can turn around, you can see the whiteness all around you, mm -hmm. but you can't see up or down. You can only see left, right, back, and front. That's it. So there's some version of up for us that would be a four spatial dimension that we can't conceive of right now. And technically speaking, like if you think about this, like if this... And you think that's thought? I, m maybe, yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> but if you think about this, like each one of these coasters is flat. Um, if I were to pick one up and then put it back down, or if I were to pick up the dot that was on there and put it back down, that dot would have no way to explain to any of the other creatures on the surface of this paper what up was right even so even if we experienced it we still wouldn't be able to say what the fuck it was there is that for us and we don't know what it is and then there's six more of those right so do the laws of physics hold up at each one of those levels are the laws of physics different for a two-dimensional object than a three-dimensional we don't know any of this yeah the one law that uh, the only law that i'm concerned with is dan is megan's law and that is uh, obviously going door to door, letting people know that you're a registered sex offender, and that's it. That's right. right. That's the only one I care about as far as Dan goes. Um, but the rest <laughs> of the laws, I'm I'm open to interpretation. You, you're open to it. Yeah. <laughs> I love the I, I love the I love the idea in quantum physics of you know the observer influences the outcome, right? Oh, yeah. Particle versus wave. That idea plays into the idea about momentum or slumps yeah. or whatever, right? Like the observer is affecting the outcome, and if we think about that. So let's take this whole COVID thing. Mm -hmm. it, what are we observing and how are we going to affect the outcome? Because is this thing a pandemic? Is it just another virus? Mm -hmm. Is it an overreach <laughs> of government? Is it, you know, us being safe? Like, it seems like eventually we're all going to get our heads around what is happening and that collective conscience, I hope, guides us in the right direction because it, it does seem like the observer does affect the outcome. The most uh, obvious example of that is Schrodinger's screwing, screwing cat, right? So he theorized Schrodinger's. That, Schrodinger's yeah, yeah, if you put like a fucking cat in a box with a cesium atom, which is poison, you would die from it, and then close the box. You don't know if the cat's alive or not until you open the box, thus exposing it, mm -hmm. right? So it's in a superposition of both dead and alive. I know that doesn't make any sense uh, to the common lay person, but it's, it's science, right? So you can't there it, it's demonstrated what he's saying is not like hoagie it's that's act, that's it's basic true. basic science no i i understand it um i i just think that there is a lot of things in the world that we cannot explain uh hence a show like this is mm. is super fascinating to talk about and we could for hours and hours and hours uh endlessly throughout history and uh john i look i'd love to have you back for even more of these 
um, if, Absolutely, if you're open to it. Uh, tell totally. everybody where they can find you. You can find me, uh, follow me on Twitter at John Brinkus underscore, J-O-H-N-B-R-E-N-K-U-S underscore. Also check out killcliff.com and all the Killcliff accounts. Um, Great. That's and, where you can find me. And are, are you out of Atlanta? Where are you based out of? People were asking I'm after the last show. I'm actually going to be moving to Atlanta. So that's the plan as of right now. Oh, gotcha. I'll be moving to Atlanta. I'm in Virginia right now. I, I, we're living in Park City and... So, but I think I'm going down to Atlanta. So, but you know what? I, I say that that's assuming the country opens back up. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So stay, stay tuned. If you, if you need some tricks to the trade from Atlanta, let me know. I, I lived there. I grew up there my entire life. Um, exactly. So yeah, I left when I was uh, 18, 18 years old. I was a young man there and you, I left to go, go to college. <laughs> yeah. I love Atlanta. Yeah. Uh, big fan. John, thanks for being on the show. Uh, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway. This was a blast. Mm -hmm. This was a great Total. show, man. Anytime I get to talk about, uh, quantum theory then i'm happy yeah <laughs> anything else in this world he's definitely not happy uh subscribe to drinker bros podcast on youtube um and then go to itunes and rate us just give us a five star in uh in a quick one-liner our advertising agency loves it that's about it we don't really care but they do and it means a lot to them uh, the reviews you mean yeah i like the look if you here's the deal if you write a review that you think is good enough screenshot it and send it to me and if it's good enough then you'll get something for it i promise yeah, just you that. dm them go i, I give, your, are you at dan holloway on yeah, instagram dan holloway. Okay, i give people free shit on the inter interwebs all the time yeah like, i i'm it's hard to break me it's hard to make me like i'm one of those like mm, that's that's pretty funny yeah if you make me laugh out loud to myself then you will get a prize i promise that's, you that and that's true he'll send out yeah. weird shit to you yep. um for john D'Anthony, I'm Ross. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>